May I now take privilege to introduce Ms. Anjali Jaipuriya ji. Anjali ji is an educationist working for her vision in bringing fundamental change in the Indian educational system. She combines her love for Vedic wisdom and its relationship with the needs of economic, social, and political conditions of today, creating contemporary learning materials. She studies Sri Aurobindo's and the mother's evolutionary work, integral yoga and educational reform, the Vedas, the Upanishads, and the Bhagavad Gita. She has been teaching the Bhagavad Gita in the light of Sri Aurobindo to a group of aspirants since 2015. Under her leadership, Sait M. R. Jaipuriya School Lucknow has won many accolades like School Excellence Leadership Award and Second Best School in Uttar Pradesh in 2017 and among top 50, top 50 schools in India, 2016. She is the president of Nafs Region, an English medium school for the underserved, which she started to fulfill her dream of giving level playing field to the children living on margins of poverty. And it is imparting the same education as Sait M. R. Jaipuriya School to 300 students at present. She has developed Dev Bhasha, a conversational Sanskrit curriculum with the help of Sri Aurobindo Ashram, which has been instrumental in instilling values in students. Her other initiatives are Healing Habitat and Raising Consciousness, which have won accolades internationally by University of Buckley and John Hopkins University. Apart from this, Anjali Ji delivers talk at national and international forums on Who is Mother India? the divine feminine, evolution, Mahavakya of the Gita, the soul, Karma Yoga, harmonizing religions, the soul of Indian art, Sri Aurobindo, and Indian nationalism, the synopsis of Bhagavad Gita, Vedas, evolution, and Sri Aurobindo, and many more. With these words, I would request session chair, Ms. Anjali Jaipuriya ji, to set the tone of the session with her thoughts on theme, Rise of India as a soft power. Namaskar, a warm welcome and my humble pranams to Sister Shivani, one of the softest parts of India, who has made inroads into the hearts of millions of followers around the globe. I am also one of them. Namaskar and pranams to Sri Prabhat Pankaji. Director Jaipuria Institute of Management, Jaipur. Prabhaji, you have truly understood the difference between literacy and education. And for this reason, I have the deepest of regards for you. Namaskar to our respected professors, faculty of gym, my dear students and dear guests. You know, it was in 1980s, I think, that Joseph Rai coined the term soft power. But centuries before that, but centuries before that, centuries before that, India had mastered not one, but so many soft powers. Other nations of the world have used the power of their armies to conquer, to plunder, to loot other countries, or to spread their religion and languages. And this point definitely needs no elaboration. But India, our India, conquered too. But it conquered the hearts of other nations. It conquered the hearts of other people through the spread of its wisdom. India embraced the world with its philosophy of Vasudeva Kutumbakam. The world is one family. India didn't send the force of armies. She didn't have to. India sent her rishis and saints, sages and yogis who won over people's hearts with Bharat's innate wisdom, Bharat's innate gyan. Actually, what does the name Bharat stand for? We must know that. Hum sab Bharat vasi hai. Bharat word ka matlab kya itna to malum hona chahiye. Bharat word comes from two verbs from Sanskrit, bha and rat. 
bha the root it means light the light of knowledge and wisdom prabhakar sun light abha light and rat we all use wo kare mein rat hai which means we are immersed bharat means that which is immersed in the light of wisdom now look at this what can one give one can give distribute spread only that which one has right india's immersion in light or spirituality permeated all subjects of life as sri aurobindo has said all life is yoga culture education art science math astronomy astrology nutrition health medicine industry finance wealth creation philosophy science no tulsi das ji we all know the hanuman chalisa tulsi das ji knew the distance of the sun from the earth in the hanuman chalisa he writes yug sahasra jo jan par bhanu lilyo tahi madhur phal janu one yug is 12000 years yug sahasra jo jan one yug is 12000 years sahasra means 1000 and one yojan is 8 miles now you can do the math you all are uh, management students multiply 12000 with 1000 and multiply that by 8 and it comes to 96 million miles according to modern science the sun is 92.9 million miles away what was that science i asked you students what was that science with which our indian rishis saw discovered calculated created they didn't have the modern tools of calculation they were connected to their inmost center which is also the center of the universe this soul is god himself they operated from the rooting they had with god within themselves they heard the voice from above जिसको हम श्रुति कहते हैं हमारे वेदर्स यू नेम अ टॉपिक यू नेम एनी टॉपिक एंड यू विल फाइंड दैट वन इंडियन और दर हैज कन्वर्टेड इट कन्वर्टेड हिज रिसर्च इन टू अंस द साइंस ऑफ यजुर्वेद सो मेनी आयुर्वेद हाउ मेनी साइंसेस एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इंडिया वॉज शॉर्ट थ्रू एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ लाइफ was shot through by her light her spirituality her rootedness in the highest hum sone ki chidiya yu hi nahi kehlaye jate hain and these sciences we shared with the world without bothering to patent them or earn from them these were our soft powers which drew the attention of the world towards us naming a few india gave to the world the zero which simplified computation completely and eventually became the basis of computers india gave to the world the science of astronomy the science of astrology through the medium of its literature our sanskrit language devabhasha is that soft power of india which is spreading softly and subtly educationists realizing educationists are now realizing that if they want to impart value education they must resort to sanskrit i personally know so many schools in the uk australia germany which are teaching sanskrit to their students and with so much reverence in the field of nutrition the world today is looking at india for it earlier it was looking at it for basmati now it's looking at it for haldi or turmeric and you know what turmeric latte jisko wo log turmeric latte kehte hain our simple haldi ka doodh is becoming a fad abroad our desi cows a2 milk and a2 milk ke bana hua ghee have become the buzzword of healthy foods replacing vegetable oils 
Imagine the famous bulletproof coffee sold in the West adds A2 ghee, A2 milk ka ghee in it as an important ingredient in its recipe. Indian cuisines, we don't need to talk about. Everybody knows what a favorite they are in international food markets. We look at the pharma sector. The pharma sector, a science of Ayurveda, is getting a fresh lease of life in the West. Our vaccines have been donated to so many countries. This is the power. This is the power of Vasudeva Kutumbakam. And when we speak of the rise of soft power, what comes to our mind is Bollywood music, Bollywood dance, Bollywood movies. And the West is crazy about it. Our classical music maestros, Pandit Ravi Shankar, Pandit Jasraj, Allah Rakha, we can't stop. The, the names are so many. And they have won over, they've captured the hearts of millions of music lovers abroad. Indian fashion. Indian fashion elements have inspired global fashion brands like Erms, Gucci, Prada. You know that Chanel's Karl Lagerfeld? His, um, he drew inspiration from our Maharaja era and his collection, Paris version of India, was after our Maharaja collection. Famous designer Jean-Paul Gaultier, he drew inspiration from our Bindis for his collection, Brits in Space. 2014-15. Hat yoga. Our yogic asanas and pranayam have become a necessary part of health regimes all over the world with yoga centers and gurus mushrooming everywhere. If this is not the rising of soft power, what else is? Our software industry and the brain of Indian youth is a soft power of Bharat for me. Definitely. Our students studying abroad are doing so well that multinationals make an effort to capture these bright minds to run their industries. Indra Nui, Satya Nadella, Sundar Pichai. Why? The vice president of USA, Kamala Harris, so many others. They spread the fragrance of Indianness in the countries they work in and interact with. Kya kya bolu? I had written. I thought of talking about the Indian conglomerates, but let it be for now. But do you know the greatest soft power of India? What is the greatest soft power of India? Prabhaji, will somebody give an answer? Somebody has written youth. The greatest Somebody has written in the, yeah, somebody has written in the chat, youth. Youth, okay. The youth is a great soft power, but what is the greatest soft power of India which is rising, which is spreading? The greatest soft power of India is her spirituality. Culture. Yeah. Janvi is writing culture. Yes, spirituality is very different from religion. Someday we can discuss the definition of spirituality and discuss the difference between religion and spirituality. Let us see that it is only in India, whether we are educated or we are unlettered, the sense of an all-pervading God, the sense of the divine, the sense of Shakti is inherent in us. This is our inheritance. This is the legacy we get by being born in India. And this is the soft power that India has which is her gift to the world. In his message on India, in his message to India on our Independence Day in 1947, Sri Aurobindo said, and I quote, the spiritual gift of India to the world has already begun. India's spirituality is entering Europe and America in an ever increasing measure. That movement will grow, unquote. How true it is today. For we can see that to satisfy its spiritual seeking, the gaze of the world is on India and India alone. It was the soft power of India that spoke through Swami Vivekananda in 1893 at the World's Parliament of Religions, Chicago, winning over the entire Congress. Who hasn't heard of Swami Yogananda, 
who lived in USA from 1920 to 1952, spreading Kriya Yoga. The Brahma Kumaris alone have 8,500 centers around the world. It is the seeking of the world which is looking at Brahma Kumaris, which is looking at India for answers. Our Bhagavad Gita is making inroads into the hearts of millions of spiritual seekers world over. Einstein said, and I quote, when I read the Bhagavad Gita and reflect about how God created this universe, everything else seems superfluous. Our Bhagavad Gita has been translated into more than 75 languages or maybe more, I'm not sure. And in English alone, there have been more than 300 translations. Who is God? Where does he live? Is he far from us or is he really close to us? How do I secure permanent connectivity with God? Will this connectivity with him help me in changing my nature? For after all, what is spirituality if the nature can't be changed? These and many such questions have been crossing the minds of seekers all over the world. And the world is seeking answers from the guru of the world, our very own Bharat Mata, our India. This is the rise of India as a soft power, my dear students. With this background, I hand over the mic to Pooja Sister Shivani to delve deeper into this subject. Thank you. Vande Mataram. <laughs>